Hi, this is Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools, and I'm going to show you just how easy it can be to replace the dull or damaged knives in your joiner or planer using our joiner and planer knife setup jigs. Having sharp, accurately set knives is extremely important for both the performance and the safety of your machines. Our jigs make it easy to accurately set and fine tune the knives in your joiner or planer for maximum performance. Let's take a closer look and I'll show you step by step just how easy this process can be. Okay, the first thing you want to do before doing any maintenance to your machines is go ahead and make sure it's unplugged. You want to make sure that there's no way that this machine can turn on while you're doing your maintenance. The next step is to grab a ruler and determine the diameter of your cutter head. In my case, I have a two and a half inch cutter head. Normal cutter heads will range anywhere from two inches up to five inches or larger, and it will determine which size setup jig you need for your machine. In my case, I'm gonna use the larger size setup jig on this Rikon joiner planer combo. Once you have your setup jigs, the first step is to zero the jig to the cutter head itself. Simply install the jig onto the cutter head so that you're on a smooth portion of the head and then you can loosen the locking screw on the jig and turn this knob to zero out the setting point on the jig itself. Once you have that zeroed out, you can lock it down and you can then see exactly where your zero point is on the scale and you can record that number. You need to do this for both jigs. The next step is to locate your owner's manual and determine how high the knife needs to be set above the cutter head itself. Once you determine that number, you can take the setup jig and simply dial in the correct measurement via the scale on the jig itself and get that exact measurement. Some machines don't give you an exact measurement in the owner's manual. In that case, what I like to do is follow the instructions for determining that my knives are set properly. And then, once I have determined that my dull knife is set properly, I can take the jig, install it on the cutter head, and locate it down, and then I can zero the jig directly to the old knife. Once I've done that, I know that the jig is in the correct place to reinstall the knife, and I would do that on both jigs, and I like to do that to the exact same place on the same knife in the cutter head so that I know both jigs are set identically. It's quite common to find machines where the knives are skewed slightly or not in the same location all the way across their length, so it's always a good idea if you're setting the jigs up to set them up to the exact same point on the head and on the knife. I've gone ahead and removed the knife and the gib from the cutter head, and now's the time to go ahead and clean the cutter head itself and the gib of all sawdust or resin buildup or rust that may have accumulated on the head since the last maintenance. After I've done this, I go ahead and wipe everything down with a light coat of oil to prevent corrosion, and then I can reinstall the gib into the head and then install my new knife into the head as well. Typically, it should just slide right in place. Once I have the gib and the knife reinstalled, I can take my jig and locate it on my cutter head. Being careful, the knives are sharp, and locate the jig on the knife and on the head. Do that for both jigs. See, they snap right in place and hold nicely with the magnets. Now, because I already have my jig set, my knife is located at the perfect height. I also try and set my jigs as far apart as possible on the cutter head, and this will ensure the best setting, the most accurate setting, and also give me the most access to the gib screws. Once I have everything in place, I can go ahead and tighten down the screws in an alternating pattern. I start in the middle, and then alternate moving outward. It's also important 
to use the correct size wrench. You want to make sure that the wrench is the right size because you don't want to strip out the screws in the gib. Now I'm using moderate pressure, not over tightening, and as I get to the screws that I can't reach because the jigs are in the way, I remove one at a time and then snug down those screws. Once I've snugged all the screws, I'm going to go back over and tighten the screws down in the same pattern one more time. This is very similar to tightening the lug nuts on a car wheel. And then just for safety's sake, one more time, not using too much pressure, snug is snug. We just want to make sure they're all consistently tight. And that's it. The first knife is set. Now we would repeat the same process for the remaining knives in the cutter head. Simply rotate the cutter head. Being careful, the knives are sharp even though they're the old knives. They still ha could have sharp spots on them. And then we would simply remove the old knives, clean the head, and install the new. If you don't have a set of joiner and planer knife setting jigs in your shop, I suggest you pick up a pair. They're going to make maintaining your joiner or planer much easier and they're going to make your woodworking safer and more enjoyable.